Hello and welcome to Soda Tasting, an online show dedicated to soda reviews and appreciation. I'm Patrick O'Keefe, and I'm joined today by my brother, Sean O'Keefe. Sean, welcome to the show. Thanks. Thanks for having me again. Yeah, welcome back. Always a pleasure. And Sean is a member of FBI Improv, youtube.com slash FBI Improv, and we make videos together as Patrick and Sean at patrickandsean.com. Now, I wanted to have Sean on this episode if I could, because it is about a Harry Potter-inspired drink. And, uh, you know, we're both fans of Harry Potter, and Sean was a fan before me, because uh, our well, grandmother my... bought the book for him, and then he got into it. And, you know, I, I caught up and enjoyed the series, and um, the series is over now, but the beverages live on. And this is the Flying Cauldron Butterscotch Beer. This is from Reed's. Uh, and, you know, it's got a little bit of the story on the side here, and, you know, here, I'll read this to you. Yeah. Since, since 1374, the Flying Cauldron has been making this magical brew for underage wizards, or wizards who are young at heart, at their brew pub in Hog's Breath, England. The recipe has changed little over centuries, little over the centuries, it, is, it has the perfect combination of spells... And uh, spells and quality natural ingredients. Add a scoop of vanilla ice cream to create our giggle potion. So, obviously, this is one of those sort of that you know this isn't licensed <coughs> by Harry Potter. It's sort of like just because you can Blatant get away rip off. No, I mean you can get away uh, <laughs> legally, you know, by saying it's wizards, right? Yeah. Because wizards and wizard lore existed before Harry Potter. But still, the flying cauldron, hog's breath instead hogs of hog's breath, breath instead yeah. of hog's mead. Wink, wink. <laughs> it's like. Yeah, so, I mean, and obviously Harry Potter uh, had butterbeer. Yeah. This, 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 so this what is called this is butterscotch yeah. beer, so they can get away with it. Yeah, so. butterbeer in the series, and that's why you have a few of these beverages popping up, butterscotch and butterbeer, and, you know, Universal Studios in Orlando has a yeah, yeah. Uh, Harry Potter um, adventure island, or islands of adventure, part of that place is a Harry yeah, Potter. Yeah, the Wizarding thing. World of Harry Potter. Wizarding yeah. World of Harry Potter, and yeah. they have butterbeer that they sell there that we've had. They do, is, it's expensive. It's pretty tasty, though. But it's really, really good, if you yeah. ever get a chance. So this says it's butterscotch cream soda, again, flying cauldron butterscotch beer. It is gluten-free, 100% natural, non-alcoholic. Um, in 12 ounces, you have 120 calories. That's a low calorie count. We'll get to why in just a second. Uh, 5 milligrams of sodium, 30 grams of total carbohydrates, 30 of which are sugars. Um, it is caffeine-free, and it is sweetened by um, cane sugar, and here's the reason that it's lower calorie, stevia. Um, it has purified carbonated water, cane sugar, vanilla extract, natural caramel, natural flavors, stevia, ribandana, ribaudiana leaf extract, and again, gluten-free. So, you know, to keep the calories low, I guess they didn't sweeten it fully with sugar. They used a little bit of the stevia to um, balance it out. Which I, I don't think it's going to be a good idea. I don't know. We'll see how it tastes. But, you know, if you're going to make a, if you're going to make a butter beer, just go all out. Make it as sweet as possible. Yeah. And, and um, you know, this is the first soda that we've had on here that had stevia in it, actually. Yeah. We've had a few sweeteners, mostly, uh, mostly high fructose corn syrup and sugar, but also some Ace K um, and... I think that's it. Oh, a little bit of agave. That's right. One had agave. Mm. And, um, so let's give it a let's taste. give it a whirl. Some ice? Uh, no thanks. Okay. I'll just try it straight up. Welcome to Hog's Me. I mean, Hog's it's Breath. breath. <laughs> I go to Hog Pimples. Huh. Huh, funny. Okay. So it's got that butterscotch uh, right off the bat. Yeah, it's good. But you know, at the same time, yeah, sir. Some doesn't smell quite right. With and the like, like the right butterscotch to me is like the Dum Dum's butterscotch flavor. Yeah, like a, a little lollipop, Amazing. and that has a good smell. This is close to that, but it's almost like there's something that is like a hint that it might not be this has as, a, as tasty as the Dum Dum. Yeah, this has a hint of holding back. Like we're gonna put sugar in, but whoa, not too much. You know, it's like I don't know what's yeah. going on. Well, um, let's try it. Yeah. Hmm. It's not bad. Oh, yeah, I'll let you make a decision. No, go for it. Mm. Well, I like it going down. It's pretty good. But then it has, you know, it's like, I don't know what it is with sodas and their, back and their aftertaste. It's like, I guess I'm, like, immune to anything that's not... Cane sh pure cane sugar, 100%, or f high fructose corn syrup. Anything else, like obviously it has stevia in it, I just get that back, that, that aftertaste. It just tastes, ugh. I just don't like it. Yeah. You know, my face is all crunched up over here, and I'm, I'm trying not to be overdramatic, but really it's, 
It's a little It's just that taste. Yeah. I guess it's the stevia. It's just... Ugh. I like the butterscotch flavor. Like, it, it does have the butterscotch in it. it. You can taste it. It's prominent. But at the same time, like I said, it's balanced out by that. I guess it's stevia. I guess the stevia that's doing it, it's just... I don't know. It, it tastes like the, it could have been like this could have been really good if maybe they had gone all out. Just you know, was, say screw it. We're gonna make an unhealthy soda. Let's just do it. Well, the thing about it is, if you're gonna make butterscotch soda, the thing it's not it's not that hard. I don't think the only thing you have to do is make it taste like butterscotch candy. Yeah. If you do that, then you'll have a good soda. This has a little bit of that, but then you get this like sticky yeah. sweetness in your face in your mouth, and also the there's something wrong with the butterscotch flavor. Like there's something there's something hitting at the top of it, like some sort of note. Yeah, it's almost like, you know, the, the butterscotch flavor there just isn't pleasant. I mean... Yeah, I don't know what's going on. I don't... I don't like this soda. I have to say, it's not It's not a very pleasant taste. You know, it just doesn't... It, it doesn't yeah. taste right. You know, no, yeah, it just... I don't know, it hits you, I guess. Like, I don't know. I, I, I almost... I don't know. I hate to say it tastes like medicine, but yeah, it's just... I don't know. It has yeah, like... Yeah, that could be it. There's something... Uh, in this flavor, and it's it's definitely not anywhere near as good as the butter beer at Absolutely Universal not. Studios. Universal Studios was just like ridiculous, like so cre like just so sweet, so creamy, foamy. It was just insane. Like it had to have been high in calorie count, but it was it was good. I only had one in my life, so why not go all out? Yeah, as I taste this, it's just not good, and I, I mean it's like, ugh. <laughs> like I don't like it, and it's you know I I don't like to rate in extremes. And last episode I gave. Um, you know, something to zero, and I hate to I hate to back it up with another one that's this low, but it's, it's just, just really not good. It's like it's if you're gonna make a butterscotch soda, it should taste like butterscotch candy. Yeah. Um, when you try to add this stevia to it, and you try to make it low calorie and all this stuff, it's just not it's not good. It's not pleasant. It sticks in your mouth. It's 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 not an enjoyable drink. Like I don't want to drink it ever no, again. No, same like Under any circumstances. I don't want to drink it. Um, and because of that, I'm going to give it, and it's getting this because it has a little bit of hint of butter flavor in there that is okay. But otherwise, just over, all this other stuff just overpowers it. It's like there's this little tiny bit of butterscotch flavor that's good, and then it's like, here's some other stuff on top of it. Here's some stuff, and here's some more sweetness, and here's this. Yeah. And um, it really wasn't a good soda, so I'm going to put it at... 0 0.5 out of 5. Um, so it's slightly better than cucumber soda, yeah, but I mean, still I'm, not as good as the pumpkin pie. Yeah, I'm gonna, you know, it's in the middle there, I guess, and, and that's Gosh. it's kind of tough when you get to that lower end, but I want to give it a little credit for that butterscotch flavor that's very tiny yeah. and is in an overwhelming mix of other stuff that is just bad when you when you drink it. So I'm uh, I'm sorry to have to do that. I don't know. You have any thoughts? Oh, I just want to say congratulations to Reeds for beating cucumber soda. So you are better than cucumbers. Just want to say that. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, it could have been better. Um, it definitely. I think they held. I mean, you know, they they took a different approach with it. I mean, you know, obviously, as I said before, it's like they could have gone all out, completely unhealthy. Boom, boom, boom. Best soda ever, but probably will 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 uh, hurt you um, uh, health wise. But um, in, in this, they you know, it's like all these free. You know, they have gluten free, caffeine free, hundred percent natural stevia. Oh, oh uh, that's good. I mean, I like that when it tastes good. Yeah, if it tastes good, but yeah, then that's something good. hits it and it just. Yeah. Anyway. So what I'd like to know from you is what is um, what's the worst soda you've ever drank? Um, let me know on SodaTasting.com or on YouTube, and you know I'd, I'd like to hear what you think. And you know we all have different tastes, so you know my worst soda might be someone else's favorite. Although I don't, I don't know if someone if this is someone's favorite soda, then that's awesome, and let me know. But um, yeah, I'd love to try your least favorites and see how they stack up with my taste. And yeah, if you'd like to see uh, future episodes of Soda Tasting, please subscribe to receive every show automatically at SodaTasting.com. Sean, thanks for coming on. Thanks. It's been fun. Excellent. And, uh, you know, as always, everything in moderation. Thank you for watching.